Hey guys, how are you? So I'll be the the lead of this progress report of, on the IBM on the IBM project. Uh, so uh, in here with us we have uh, André Souza, Paulo Bemarques, that's me, Pedro, uh, Gil, Domingues, Saltazar, uh, it's André, and George. Hi George, how are you? And Jim Pick. Hi Jim. <laughs> so. Don't forget to uh, put your name in the list of attendees and uh, uh, anything that you want to talk about uh, in the um, in the in the section that we have here to um, that we can see if we want to talk about anything. So, um, to, Gilles Domingues already volunteered to be the note taker of this session, right, Gilles? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so can, we can move forward. Uh, okay. So let's start by uh, the round of uh, intros and updates. So uh, first on the list is Andre Souza. Hey guys. So I've been the designer, the UI UX designer for the No Mills project and the uh, last sprint. Can you hear me well? Okay, and the last sprint I had a few tasks already accomplished, uh, which is the deliver of the initial concept for the splash or landing page for the for the Nomils app, which is something really high level for educate the users and try to sell the app and understand a bit better what is the, the main purpose uh, for it. So I have a demo to, today to present uh, on the end of the of the, the call, which is a low low fidelity prototype uh, with um, with a full page scroll. Uh, displaying some of the sections that's already developed, developed or at least designed, and uh, yeah, let's see it in the end of the the, the call. Uh, already defined the the content and the sections uh, more accurately with uh, Andre for the the same landing page, and uh, another task that I already finished was the it was today actually uh, um, it, it was the de the deliver the the mean width and mean height for the profile page with the the breakpoints and everything already accomplished for the implementation side. Uh, regarding the edit profile uh, model, and which is a really simple flow, uh, I already predicted the, the components. Uh, they're all, uh, already included on the style guide. The style guide, um, with, there are three of them, the, the radio button, the select box, which is a do drop down, and the trigger uh, for how we can to display and uh, uh, find a user location uh, regarding the, the, the profile. Um, another thing that was a, a work in progress and it's already uh, appearing on the, the previous sprints was update the iconography uh, according to the multiple pages that we developed previously. And uh, right now I'm, I'm working on the landing page uh, with more defined uh, sections and next steps for me will be the predict and study the user flow for how can we, how can a user remove an identity uh, study the, the other types for identities which are not backed up yet. Um, another thing to, to, to accomplish for this sprint will be include the, the call to action for the backup identity on the profile page. It was something that we, we didn't uh, thought yet, so I need to, to accomplish it, this task for this sprint. And uh, uh, study the responsiveness for the landing page. Maybe, I don't know if I, I can accomplish this on this sprint or not, but it will be uh, yeah, it's a good scenario if I, I could do that on the, this 15 days. And yeah, that's my, my run of updates. If you have any questions. No, there seems to be no questions for Andres Souza. So next on the list, it's me. So uh, during this sprint, uh, I concluded together with Andre uh, the IDM wallet implementation of the identity scope. So basically, we made an integration of the RBTV as our distributed database. Uh, we now have the ability to pick, create, import, and remove an identity. Uh, we also implemented the identity profile and integration with RBTV. So basically, we are replicating uh, the details of a profile with RBTV. Uh, the profile is actually uh, a schema.org. Um, based on three main types. Uh, actually, the types are person, uh, organization, and thing. Uh, 
we also implemented uh, the identity devices and integration with RBTV. So we have uh, replicated all the devices that an identity has, but we are we also store uh, uh, the private key in our uh, local storage in the the for the for the device. Uh, and uh, we also implemented the backup implementation. So basically, uh, when we create uh, an, an identity, uh, the user might not uh, actually want to go through the process of backing up uh, its identity with a mnemonic or a PDF a paper so that he can print and save it for later. Uh, so actually, we are storing uh, that data in the storage until the user back, backs it up. But uh, there will be a warning in the, in the designs or, or in, the, um, in the UI so that the user is always uh, aware that he needs to back it up. Uh, it's safer uh, like that. Uh, we also did a, a little bit of research and development of how we would implement encrypted replication with RVTV, uh, me and Andre. Um, we'll, we last like one day or two uh, in this task. Uh, and we figured out that uh, the way we would like to implement it uh, or the right way to implement it will take uh, too much time uh, since RBTV doesn't provide us uh, the ability to, to, to encrypt um, the messages. And we were trying to, um, we, we, we were trying to figure out a way to do it um, the safest way possible. Uh, and that alone would take us a lot of time and we needed to rescope uh, and we decided that for now as a proof of concept purpose we are going to use RBTV as is and later uh, we are going to um, implement those safety measures uh, and that's it so basically in the next sprint uh, we are I'm going to implement the session scope uh, but without signing so we will be able to create a session destroy a session verify if that session is valid and get one by by its ID uh, so basically that's it any questions for me No, so I think we can move along. Pedro. Hi, everyone. So what I've been doing the past two weeks, I've concluded um, some, some adjustments on avatar component. Um, the, avatar component has, the avatar picker component has a label um, that usually says um, pick a photo or something like that. But um, previously, uh, the label was always on bottom, and now you can choose the alignment uh, of that label. Uh, I did the, the PR for that. You, you have the, the links uh, in the description if you want to, to, to check it. And I've also implemented the radio component um, that will be used in, in the edit uh, profile um, uh, model. You will see uh, later because I will show you a demo. And I have also um, done the autocomplete select component. Um, this component is also used on the edit profile. Um, I have also completed the button text component. Uh, this, this component was used uh, in the create identity user journey. Um, and I've also refactored and finished the, the journey itself, the create identity. Um, in progress, I am currently finishing the edit profile. Um, I will open the PR soon. I am currently missing location feedback when, when whether you have an error or not, and also the wallet integration. What I'll be doing uh, next is implement authentication prompt. Um, it's a prompt that uh, you you will use to 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 authenticate with other apps. And that's it for me. Any question? No, there seems to be no questions. Thanks, Pedro. Next on the list is Gil Domingues. Hey, guys. Uh, so keeping in chart, in the past uh, sprint, I finished the import identity user journey. I will be showing you uh, during the demo section the, the final state of the process. Uh, the integration is partially done. The only part that is lacking is the import step at the end that we had some issues, but uh, in no time it will be fixed. 
uh, not fixed, but integrated. Uh, in the meantime, I've been working on the identity profile page, and I marked as what I'll be doing next, though it's still uh, very connected to the identity profile page. The list of devices, social proofs, and apps in the profile page. So I'm working on both these things at practically the same time. So that's pretty much it, if you have any questions. So, no questions for Gilles. So the next one on the list is Satazor. Hello, hello everyone. Um, so I'm Andrew Cruz and I'm mainly in the backend track. So uh, during um, the last sprint, last sprint uh, I've concluded the implementation of the identities list on the, on the sidebar, which is on the left. So it, it just, it's, it's with mocks. It's not, it's not currently with the real identities. It's just with mocks. But I think, Pedro, um, could you, could, I, I want to ask Pedro something. When, when you demo out the, your, your journey, the, the journey that you made, could you uh, demo the sidebar as well, the identities, just for people to see the look and feel of, of it? Okay, sure. Um, I, I thought I, I wouldn't um, present the, the, the create user, the create identity, uh, but I can do it because I, I did present it in the last uh, report call, but yeah. I can do it again that, because now it's finished. Yeah. I mean, I mean you, you don't need to present the created journey, just, just uh, you know, you're going to present your stuff, but you can mention that now you have the sidebar, etc. Just for, you know, just for, for us to skip this, the, the share screen and all of, all of that that takes some time to set up. Yeah, you sure, can sure. Present it yourself. It's sure. really simple. Um, so I finished the, the list. It's not yet integrated with, uh, with uh, the wallet, the real list, but I'm doing that um, afterwards. Also, I, I've helped uh, uh, Paulo uh, to implement identity profile and devices uh, scopes in the, in the identity. So now we, we can define the profile with your name, your photo, your, um, your name, and so on. I mean, name, avatar, and... And, and an name, image. image, name avatar, no, name avatar, and and the type of or the type of the, of your identity because you can be a person or you can be an organization or can, you can be other. So you have that done, and also you have the device scope with replication. Basically, basically, whenever you create uh, your identity, a new device is generated and added to that scope. And uh, also, when you import a new identity into other device, other devices, we also create a new a new device and add it, uh, add it, uh, add that device as well to your DID document. And all of that is integrated with both the the DID document and also with with the replication among among all the wallets. Um, so, as an example, when whenever you change your name, all your wallets should reflect the change. Uh, the same with the devices. Um, so I help I help uh, Paul with that, and also I finished uh, the structuring of the Nomius web app. Um, this was a task that uh, I mentioned last sprint, last sprint. I was in progress, but I finished it. Uh, if you if you know you want to know more, I, get, uh, I put there a link for you to follow. Uh, currently, I'm integrating the creation of identities with IDM wallet because as as I think Gilles mentioned, the, both the creation and import are mocked. So uh, there is no real identities being created or imported, but we have that done in the wallet, and I'm integrating it in the in the app itself. So I should I should be, be it should be ready in the next couple of hours. I actually wanted to uh, conclude that for this for this session, but I I, I couldn't. Uh, but hopefully in the next in the next meeting I can show you the full integration working. Um, also, uh, my next my next task is to also integrate the, the import of identities with the IDM wallet. Is to also integrate the list of identities in the sidebar with the real identities that are stored within the wallet. And now I have two more tasks which are kind of major, uh, which is to implement the IDM bridge, the first type of IDM bridge, which is which is based on Post Message API, so that we can have uh, a DAP communicating. Uh, with a with a wallet via post message uh, API, um, and so I need to work on that. Um, and also, uh, I will start implementation um, of the DM client, and starting by that authentication and session, so that we can, in the DAP itself, use a client uh, called IDM client to uh, start up 
uh, a session to see if we are logged in or logged out. And if, if you are not logged in, we can authenticate through the wallet. Uh, and this will raise, raise a prompt asking you for permission. And whenever you accept, a new session is created for that ties together the wallet and the, the DAP that you, that you did the action. So I will start implementation of the IDM client. These will be huge tasks. They will probably uh, take more time than, than one sprint, but I will start implementing in, the, in this sprint. So I think that's all. Uh, is there any questions for me? No, so I think, I think there's no uh, questions. Next is George. Hi, George. Well, I hope you can hear me. Uh, I Well, it's my first time joining the call. I didn't do much uh, this sprint or next sprint, I expect. Uh, I'm with, well, we, we've met briefly, I think, most of us, but I'm with Protocol Lab Research. We will be taking on uh, some of the management of this relationship as we transition into this new dev grant uh, framework. And I'm here mostly to learn more about how you guys work and what the current state of this is. So, well, thanks for the fantastic summaries. Thanks, George. And next is Jim. Hi, Jim. Hi, just uh, just spying on you guys again. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, uh, I'll have to cut a uh, jump off at uh, the half hour mark, but uh, I enjoy watching what you guys are doing. So. Thanks, Jim. Thanks for stopping by. So uh, next on the agenda, uh, we have some demos. Uh, the first one is uh, the edit profile by Pedro. Are you ready, Pedro? Yeah. Let me just okay. share my screen. Let me stop uh, and share. OK. David is, is here as well. Hi, David. <laughs> Hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> You're lurking here. <laughs> Yeah, I wanted to be on time, but then I got to wait because the last meeting uh, got longer. But yeah, I wanted to just join, drop by, check in, say hi, and see how things are going. <laughs> I, I want great. Let, let, let me say something because there are um, some people here, and then I want to ask a few questions because we are having some difficulties with. Um, the way we use IPFS uh, on, on this on this project. So I will, in the end, explain some of our challenges. If, if you could point out some solutions, it would be nice for us to unblock us um, in the things that we are blocked. But I will, I will explain uh, that uh, in the end of the call, I think. Sounds good, sounds good. By the way, I, I see this call is recorded. Do you post the call recording publicly? Uh, yeah. Is it on the repo? Yeah, and, like, is the calendar event public as well? Yeah, uh, I mean, it's not in, in any calendar, but it's documented on the README. Uh, we have a label called progress call report so that you can see all the issues of all the calls and how, how, how can you assist, um, how can you view one. Also, the recording where, where all uh, is there. So in case you, you want to see it, it's actually on YouTube. It's, it's on a playlist, I think, called IDM, but it's inside the Protocol Labs, I think, Protocol Labs um, organization on, on YouTube. Okay, okay, okay. Sounds cool. Yeah, uh, I feel like some folks from our community would love to participate in these calls or at least like just join every so often. So maybe I'll just send an email pointing to those to, to those resources. Yeah, I mean, we can, we can actually m migrate the events to, to, your, to, your, to, to your or to some calendar that you feel um, suitable for this. We just created the, the event and invited people that we wanted to invite and people that actually manifested interest on this project. But if mm -hmm. you feel that you should use a public calendar, it would be nice for us as well. Yeah, uh, okay, so uh, I'll let us do for myself to add it to the IPFS community calendar, which is like where we list all the, the, talk, the talks, the calls for IPFS. But yeah, sorry, uh, I diverge. <laughs> Please continue. Let's proceed with the demos. Okay, so let me know if you are seeing my screen can you see my screen no not yet not, not yet. yet no not, not yet. yet i don't know what's wrong i've clicked to share my my screen not yet nothing happening no. what? okay sorry can, can you see it now Okay. Yeah. Cool. cool. 
So here on the left, we have the, the sidebar that Andre asked me to present you. Um, so we have all the Game of Thrones characters here. I, I, I don't know if they are all here because I, I, I'm not a big uh, Game of Thrones fan, but uh, whatever. So here we have the sidebar. Um, when you click on uh, identity, uh, it rip obviously uh, each character represents an identity. Um, when you click on the identity, you are re redirected to, to the identity page. Um, and this button is not um, integrated yet because I am on a different branch, but this is already integrated. When you click here, uh, a model for create a new identity appears, um, but this is not uh, connected yet because I am another branch. Um, so what I will show you, let me just, okay. I will show you the edit profile. So here we have, let me just, okay. here we have. Um, so we have here some, some info, like my name, nationality. Uh, here is the dropdown that I was uh, implementing um, and, and opened the PR. Um, it, it allows you to, to choose your nationality. Here we have the, the, the radio components that I also have implemented for this, for this task particularly. Um, so you can choose your gender um, and also the location. Uh, we have uh, automatically uh, uh, location detection. So you can, I, I'm currently uh, using Lisbon as my, my previous location, but I will choose um, to, to, to detect my current location. I will allow, I'm using the geolocation web browser API. And okay, here you can see that I'm in Porto. Um, and what I'm missing, what I'm currently missing is have here uh, um, an error feedback, uh, whether you block, whether you choose to, to not allow the, the browser to, to detect your location or something goes wrong with the, 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 the promise itself. So this is what I'm missing and also the, the, the integration with the, the IDM wallet. Pedro, can I make a quick question? Uh, sure. Regarding the, the nationality input field, can you display the, the typing indicator, such as uh, you're typing three letters and ah, okay. yeah, sure, sure. results? Yeah. Yeah. Sure, okay. okay. So if that's working right now, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's working, it's working. So you can write, I, I will also add uh, um, a, new, a new filter because currently um, if what you type, let's suppose, uh, hi, um, it will show you all the options that have um, the, the letter hi. Um, and this is, not, this is not supposed to be like this. Uh, uh, Souza uh, yeah, wants Starting it. letter should define the, the country, yeah. Yeah, I, I need to have that filter. Um, but you can see that it's already working. And that's it for the edit profile. I don't know if you have any question. I just want to point out that um, uh, for for the newcomers that that uh, are here for for the first time, this is a bit disconnected because you have a button in the in the, I think in the home page that opens this this user flow, but this edit profile will be within the profile page, which is being implemented by by Geo. Um, that's why we can't we can't see all the pieces connected. Uh, but hopefully in the next in the next few few uh, weeks we have all of these. Um, working and connecting in terms of how the user experience is and the user flow is. Yeah, that's right. I forgot to mention that. That's it? Yeah, that's it. Is there any questions for, for Pedro? No? I just want to mention as well that all of the profile uh, data is using uh, the schema.org um, models. So for instance, uh, we are using the person schema.org, we are using the organization schema.org, and also the most basic, which is the thing, I, I think it's called like that way, yeah, thing uh, type, which is when a user, when, when the user chooses uh, between person, organization, or other, when the person uses, uh, sorry, the user chooses other, it will be thing, because it's uh, the most abstract thing um, to choose. Okay, 
So I think that. Uh, Can I stop sharing? Yeah. Okay. Thanks, okay. Pedro, for the for the presentation. Uh, the next demo is. Uh, where are it? Oh, where is it? Okay, it's Jill. Jill, can okay, you? Okay, uh, let me start sharing the screen. Thanks. Okay. Well, please make, let me know when you start seeing the. the yeah, we are. We are seeing. Them. Okay. This isn't too slow because it's sharing the the screen from the large monitor for the by the four uh, the four K monitor. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, it's kind of uh, kind of slow in terms of the feed, visual feedback that we are having. <laughs> okay. Let's see if it is not too slow. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, sorry about that. I think your, okay, your computer so, is burning. <laughs> yeah. It's really slow. Very likely. Okay, so what I'm going to show you uh, in this demo is the import um, user journey. So as Pedro showed you in the past uh, call, we have that shared screen at the start where you can choose between creating a new identity and uh, importing an existing identity. Uh, I have in my clipboard uh, a possible mnemonic of uh, an identity that I've created before <laughs> and that I want to import. Uh, let's just try like, making a mistake here and deleting one of the letters in the, in the word. <laughs> Oh, it's stuttering a bit. If it wasn't sharing, it wouldn't be stuttering so much. I don't know if you see. Okay. It's really slow. I'm looking at Pedro's screen. Uh, okay. Really slow. I don't know if you prefer that I share in the uh, uh, screen of the the laptop, or if I just continue. I don't know. If it takes like two seconds, it will, it will be nice. If it takes more than that, than that. I think. It, yeah. well, let's just carry on then. Uh, now, replacing the, the letter that I removed and restarting again, it should go through and show the green button and the check mark and move on to the. Mm -hmm to the step where we get to verify that the details of the identity that we're importing are the correct ones. We see here the name and the, the picture that we uploaded when creating the identity. So we can continue. And by continuing, we can decide what the, what the device is and the name of the device. <laughs> And this is similar to what Pedro showed you on the last call. And then this is the final step. And as I told you before, uh, the imports part is not fully integrated. So uh, at this stage, it only shows you an error. But supposedly, if all things go well, it should tell you that the identity was successfully imported. And you have a button in place of this retry to Close the model and go back to the, the profile page. So that's it for, for this demo. If you have any questions, yeah, I will just uh, just like to clarify what what will happen under the hood whenever you are importing. So whenever you are importing, um, you type the mnemonic, and also we have will have later on other mechanisms besides the, the mnemonic. For instance, we'll be able to uh, scan a QR code for you to import your your mnemonic. But after we have the mnemonic, we um, deterministically generate your uh, master key. And, by, by, and now that we have the master key, we generate a device key and add it to the DID document uh, by updating the IPNS record uh, to 
pointing to another document that contains that device public key. And afterwards, we also set up all the replication within the wallet. So uh, we, we initiate the, uh, the profile, the devices, and, and so on, the RBT, the RBT B replication so that we can replicate the data from, from the other wallets. And also we will have uh, in the future uh, pinning um, so that even if the, the wallets uh, are not online or, or connected to the internet or even online because I can have my phone shut, out, uh, sh shut off or my desktop shut off and, and all of that, I can, uh, even then I can import because there's some, someone pinning the data for me. Um, and, and I think that's it, what's happening under the hood. Is there any questions for Jill? I have more of a suggestion. So I'm thinking, um, so this looks pretty cool. Uh, and, and given like this, the set of features that it has available already, um, I think that a cool thing to do at IPFS camp would be to actually encourage people to create their own Nomius profile, right? And, and, and the way to do this is, well, first to just tell people how to do it. Uh, and second, to, to create an incentive, right? Like a, a, a game. Um, and so given that we have the sci-fi fair, and so for those of you that haven't followed any of the communications on my PFS camp, um, it has multiple formats. One of them is a sci-fi fair. Think about science fair, but futuristic. Um, and, and so you will have a space and people will be roaming around and you can have whatever you want, like from projectors, screens, flip charts, whatever. It would be very cool to have kind of like the IPFS camp as an entity and then people creating their anonymous profiles and becoming like friends with IPFS camp. Um, and, and, and if there was like kind of like a, like a, just like a visualization of just like the, like the friends, like the friends list of IPFS camp just growing and giving everyone like the experience and kind of like an explanation of like what is happening. Oh, you're creating a key. And like you, when you're making this friendship, you're assigning something that you're sending to this other user and then this other user can prove that you are both friends, etc. Uh, then like it gets you 150 users. Um, that can can test <laughs> can test Tomius and can get excited and can ask a lot of questions and of course potentially contribute. So I anyway, just wanted to throw this out there as in like one more things for you guys to consider. <laughs> uh, yeah. I know you know a lot already. <laughs> no, I mean that will be uh, real nice and and I think I've saw something similar in another conference, not related to identity, but was kind of a way to for people to know that this stuff existed. And they could um, actually they were they were capturing interest and kind of um, not not forcing but but le leading the user to subscribe to their uh, newsletter for you know to keep um, to keep the users updated to the changes or new releases of the product. Um, uh, the thing is that um, I'm afraid that we have so much work to do still for the for the IPFS camp and we still have to do the workshop and um, and uh, pro probably a talk. Um, I'm afraid that we won't have time, but uh, we can consider doing that um, in another in another event. Um, it will be kind of nice in the next event, I, I would say. I don't know what what your um, thoughts are in terms of the next the next uh, meetings or the next the next conferences or, or whatnot. But maybe you can we can after June do something like that in a in another kind of camp meeting or or conference. Sure, again, like it was just like throwing out an idea, uh, wanting the seed. Uh, I know that you are pretty busy already. Like if you happen to find a time, then you find a time. If you don't happen, that's fine. Uh, it, it, it is just like a reminder of like using IPFS Camp as a platform to get this more out there, get more yeah. users and more people engaged. One thing that we will do and, and uh, Andrea will show afterwards is that we'll have a kind of splash page to, to, um, for you to know Nomius a little bit more. And in that page, we'll have um, um, a subscribe, a subscribe. Uh, um, get kind of, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Get for it. yeah. So that you can put your email and then we can um, deliver you updates about Nomius. Um, that's what we're gonna do for now, at least what we have planned. So any more questions? No. no? So I think we can move forward. So uh, we are now in the questions part, the generic questions part. I think that, what? There's, there's still my demo, my demo. Yeah. Oh, thank, thank you for the oh, list. Oh, it's, it's not on the list, sorry. So Andre, can you demo it please? Yeah. 
Thanks. Okay, let me try to go through a bit for the, the landing page. Can you see it well? Okay, yes. perfect. So the, the first section is just a, a hero banner that will have a um, 3D shader uh, made with a WebGL. The idea here will be uh, when, once you move around on the, on the mouse, the, the face will, will try to follow your, your movement. It's just the wow factor for the, for the hero. And then you'll start scrolling to see what you can see here on the, almost on the bottom, which is the vision of this project, where we present some of the, of the benefits of it and why Nomius, such as a, an app. So there are some high-level uh, stuff that we dis decided and defined it here, me and alongside with, with Marco and, uh, and Andrea, of course. Uh, yeah, just uh, uh, please be, be aware and, and be, be with me since this is just a concept. It's not yet uh, totally defined. So if you have any questions, please go 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 through and, and ask. And yeah, yeah, that's perfectly okay. Here we have a, a banner for the the concept where you can see this uh, really short description, which has a, a CDA a CDA for the for the GitHub, which is a, a link for for the paper and everything which is under the hood, such as, as Andre said previously, of the what is IDM and what is Nomius, since, since they are not the, the same project. And yeah, uh, just a demo with the with app. And then a full width or, uh, yeah, full width banner with a, with a, um, a quote for what we think that, that is the, the, the Nomius, uh, an, an untemporable uh, world um, uh, under your control. And then, yeah, the, the lead capture here. The, this section will be totally fixed on the left hand side when you once you see just the title and the, the input field for the for the newsletter submission. And then this this animation will go through and once you're starting with with the stamp, and that just stamps the with the check mark, just a animation with the SVGs. Next section is just uh, another banner for uh, as a lead capture for the developers that we try to integrate or at least uh, collaborate uh, with the project. And then we finished with a, with a roadmap. This is a draft as well. So the, the, the topics on the left side aren't decided. It's just uh, to look at, at it as a, as a component. And yeah, that's it for now. Okay. Have any questions, please go ahead. So the plan is to implement this early next month. So we'll start implementing these, uh, I think, in third, uh, third June, I think. And uh, in like three to four days, we hope to conclude the implementation of this landing page. And then we, we will need to deploy it on, on IPFS. We'll be using Gatsby for this. Then I will uh, I will reach out the the, um, the infrastructure team to to um, integrate with um, with the CI CD pipeline in order to pin the, the website and deploy it on deploy it on on nomius.io, which is the domain we we bought for for the project. Okay, so I think that's it. Uh, so we can now move forward to the the questions part. I think there's no more demos. <laughs> so I think that Andre has some questions about. Uh, of the integration of IPFS uh, in Nomius. Uh, so, Andre, do you want to reach out? Sure. So, um, in brief, um, we use IPFS for many things. So, uh, let's start with identities. The first ID method that we are using is IPID. And because of the name, it's, it's, it obviously sits on top of, of IPFS. More specifically, uh, IPID uses IPNS to map your unique uh, identifier, which is the DIT, the decentralized uh, identifier. Uh, so it's a mutable pointer, which uses IPNS, to point to a seed, uh, which is your latest version of your DID document. And that DID document contains your device keys and, uh, and some other information that uh, is not important for the discussion, but it's, it's essentially that. So what we're facing, um, or in terms of technical difficulties, difficulties that we have, is that we, are, we want to be uh, want to work on the want to work on the browser without any extensions or plugins or whatever. So we are having difficulties in 
both publishing the IPNS record and, and uh, resolving the same IPNS record in another device. Even if the, the, the same device, even if the original device is online and fully connected, we can't really resolve the IPNS record. It takes for, forever until it, until it times out. Uh, we are having the same problem with, uh, with seeds, with uh, the documents themselves. Um, so in the browser, whenever you, we, we publish the, um, the, the ID document, we get the seed. And if we go into another, another um, browser, for instance, we spawn a canary version of Chrome, we can't really resolve that seed. Um, and we thought that, okay, maybe we can use IPFS Companion to help, to help uh, us with that. And we pointed to, uh, to external IPFS node just for the workshop, for, for people to, to actually be able to, to, to um, experiment with Nomius. But then we can't use the, the companion because the companion don't, doesn't have two features that we use. One of them is the, the ability to import keys uh, because remember that we have the master key that we need to import through IPFS in order to update the IPNS record. So it doesn't have that. But even if it, if it, uh, if it was uh, possible to do that, we can't really... Uh, use IPM, IPNS publish because it's not uh, yet implemented in the companion again. So, okay, maybe we want to not use the companion, but maybe use uh, uh, the, the HTTP client for, for, the, for us to connect to the daemon, to a Go daemon in your machine. But then we can't really use, um, we, we ended up uh, eating other issues because we can't enable the pub sub, uh, the pub sub within, within the GSI the GS HTTP client because it's not yet implemented for the browsers. Um, so we kind of... And we need the pub sub because of the... Yeah, we need the pub sub just to, for you to know. We need the pub sub for our VTB because we need it to... Um, so that the data is replicated and peers can connect or see each other and connect uh, to a pub sub. So we kind of stuck in, in this situation where we can't really um, present present Nomi as working fully in the browser without any external tools. The only thing that we think might work for the workshop is to actually um, build, build uh, an Electron version of Nomius, which should be pretty easy because we are using web technologies. And then we use, um, we use the, the GS HTTP client pointing to a daemon that is the Go version now, for instance, then it should work because we can now use PubSub, we can resolve IPNS, IPNS records and so on. Um, so what I wanted to ask is if there are any other ways that we can make this work without having to install an Electron app of Nomius, fully working in the browser without, it, without any extensions or, or any or sort of resorting to daemons um, that must be installed on the, on the computers. Mm -hmm. So I think there is, uh First, like, thank you so much for like explaining the multiple paths. Like, I, I know there's like so many avenues to explore, like so many alternatives to use an IPFS node in the browser, especially. Um, and, but and I totally get the vision behind like just, just making sure that like it's all browser based, so like people don't have to install anything and like remove a bunch of configuration setups. Um, just like let's say like let's remove all the options with Go IPFS for a second, but like just just put a note there like the pops up on the browser. Nowadays, is actually like it is literally just like a patch to the, to the client library. Like we we disabled it in the past um, because of like technical reasons with GoIPFS, but there is no reason why not to enable it again. It's just like it hasn't been done because I guess like people haven't spoken loudly enough. So so I guess like just like being Alan and or Alex or Dirk to to get that done uh, and and say that it's a priority. Uh, even like even if it's not your priority, because like. It seems like it would be useful, even if it's just for the sake of experimentation. Just, just like make sure to communicate that to them, like on the issues about pops up on a browser. Uh, there is no reason why it should not work. But yeah, let's say we remove all the options we go IPFS to design. Um, on the IPNS publishing, so IPNS publishing is historically like slow everywhere. Like IPNS publishing uses VHD. The VHD, when it's resolving content, it looks for the records of a CID. Uh, when it's resolving content, like it does a hack where if I'm looking for the holder of this record, I'm also connected to nodes. While I'm connected to nodes, I'm sending the, my bit swap want list. And so I just so happen to hit nodes that have the file. And so I start retrieving it even before resolving the record. Um, and so it's kind of like just, um, it, 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 it short circuits itself. And so that's why like fetching data is kind of like 
reliably fast. Um, when it comes to publishing a signed record, it doesn't do that first because like the, the record doesn't go through BitSwap, it just goes through the DHT, and he wants to make sure that it is grabbing enough nodes to do the publish, and then also it's grabbing enough nodes to do the reading, right? Like when you are fetching the record, you want to fetch at least from 20 nodes, and then you want to compare all the records that you fetched, and then just use an ancestry chain where you see, oh, this is the newest one, this is the one I'm going to resolve. And because you have this rule of um, trying to resolve from 20 nodes, and because like your record probably is not published with 20 nodes, or those 20 nodes is hard, are hard to discover, it takes time. A hack that um, that the Open Bazaar people did that like apparently it worked really well for them is just say oh, like just just do default the resolution to one node as soon as you get like one name uh, it's fine and and that typically actually is very fine because unless you update these records like every second then like if you update them every minute or every ten minutes or every hour the probability that like through your like crawling the DHT that you are going to hit the number of nodes that give you like the most fresh record is actually pretty high. Um, but this is just like values that you can tune. Like you can like adjust this, this like hookup value. So this is like one option. Another option is doing the publishing of these IPNS records through PubSub. This is something I know it works on, on GoIPFS. Uh, I need to check if JSIPFS is implemented, but I know that there was like progress there where instead of like publishing the IPNS record through the DHT and putting it out there for the future people to like find it, you just say, I'm going to publish this record on this topic, right? And like every every member that is interested on this topic will subscribe to the same topic. And then when I need to update the record, like I'm just going to transfer it directly to them. Right? So 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 like it's direct transfer. The same way that you like you broadcast all the other messages through WhatsApp. But this time like you're publishing the record. Um, I know that Go Go does this, you need to check for for Jess. And so, um, and, and I guess like fourth option uh, is, uh, or fourth option slash question is, what did the Jest team tell you about like these hiccups? Like it seems like you have a very concrete user report of like a performance that is on eating your requirements. Do they understand the problem? They do, need, do they understand the urgency? Do they have an answer for you in terms of like expectation to deliver um, the, the, the fix? Uh, are you aware of any of this? Like, was there even a conversation? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I've talked, I've spoken with um, Vasco and, and Hugo uh, about this, uh, and I know they they aren't directly in in IPFS, uh, the GS IPFS directly uh, now. But um, what they told me is that um, they weren't expecting the, for instance, a simple fetch of a seed within a browser to take more than one minute. They didn't expect that. But um, sometimes it takes like five minutes, sometimes it fails. And they told me that, that they know they, in terms of the infrastructure, they are kind of changing things or migrating things um, so, that, so that the bootstrap nodes and stuff like that are, are not as stable as they were uh, months ago. So they pointed, pointed me out that it could be, uh, or one of the issues could be that. Uh, in terms of the IPNS publishing and, and resolving, they said to me that it's pretty slow and it's normal. Um, but, but it's not an issue for the workshop because in the workshop, I just want things to work and want, we have one advantage, which is it's probably people will, will be in the same network, right? So we can take leverage of that and essentially work around, around that by, by doing, for instance, you said that we can tweak the, the, the amount of peers we, we receive, like the, a quarter or something. So if you can point or change that to just one, it's fine because it's for the workshop, it's for people to know better the project and, and all of that. And later on, we can think about those problems in a... In a, in a yeah, 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 I, I agree. And like, it's fine to like, just like, make decisions based on the constraints of like also remember like wi-fi is very unreliable if we need to bring extra routers or like yeah for g mi-fi modules like definitely make sure to account for them um but like like these these bugs like these dependencies across projects and across teams need to be well written down and with all these multiple options and like with the carefulness that you already like you already invested the time on like exploring all these options 
like put them out there in writing and ask for the teams to report back what is their expectation on like being able to help you. Otherwise, like this is going to get lost. Like this is going to be just like informal conversations, like com like completely untrackable. Like not like six weeks will pass and like no one will even know that like it was a problem, right? Like, um, like the JSIPFS team will be able to commit to some things. Right now, we are in a fortunate position where like there's actually a team, not just like a single person. Right, there's like four people, um, and and there's like this big goal of the camp. And so, well, it's like. Have make sure that like the IPNS is fast over PubSub. That that is a possibility. Let's make sure that like CIDs are fast to load. Like we should not go into the camp. Like if you are reporting that the CIDs are slow to load, that is a problem for the entire uh, set of applications that exist on top of just Retails. That is not okay. And so um, users need to report these bugs. And like if we know this, like it's like we need to report it. Um, and, and of course, like the multiple reasons the infrastructure team has been kind of like under fire because like the, the usage has been just growing dramatically. We have to scale up the network like multiple times. Like there's like things like happening everywhere, but that's why it's important to write it down and kind of like cross link it so that we, we have a list of dependencies and checkboxes of like path one, do, 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 path two, do, 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 do. And like, if there is like a thing that is like impossible to do, then we, we default to the next path um, and so on. Yeah, yeah. But, but yeah. I would definitely create, create an issue on, on GS IP, IPFS at least. Um, we just uh, kind of like uh, go through all the options like in, uh, in the yesterday or something like that. Um, not yeah, yesterday. So uh, we'll compile that in an issue and, and ask for help specifically to, to Alan and then Alan can go, go, go through all the issues and, and forward, forward the, the issues to other people as he sees, sees fit. Um, but yes, we will compile that list as soon as possible that, that, so that we don't have issues in the workshop. At least if we commit with a strategy, even if, if people have to install uh, GoDemon in their machines and to work, to, to make things work, it's okay. Um, but, but, but yeah, we'll create an issue and, and we'll find a strategy for, for the workshop that works for, for everyone within the room. Uh, yeah, that, and like, if, if it's just like, yeah, Really, like, remember, like, when people are installing a Go daemon, now you're asking them to go to another website to open their terminal. Some people might have Windows machines. Some people might have, like, Mac. Some people might have Linux. That is just, like, opening, like, Pandora's box. Right? Right. Like, um, and, and, like, you have a unique thing that you can make all your workshop work in the browser. <laughs> Let's, like, benefit from that. And, like, probably if I were you, I would just say, hey, like, just use Chrome. <laughs> right, like, uh, like, hey, workshop at the needs just install Chrome before coming here, like, uh, or Firefox or whatever you pick. Um, because like, what you don't want is to waste 15 minutes running from Apple laptop to install things on people's machines. Right. Um, right. Even if we go that way, we will uh, list them in the pre-requirements of the session so that people uh, actually get uh, the daemon installed before going there. But, yeah. but as you said, we will Again, try not uh, to do that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll try yeah, to like, go the, the fully browser. At yeah. 30 in your, on your room, some people will be so overwhelmed with information. I would even say just like bring another machine that can spawn like 30 nodes and then just give the IP addresses to those nodes to, to, to those users. They will be on a some local area network. Like you take the responsibility of having the nodes spinning and for them, it's the same thing as if there was a node running on their browser page because they're just like connecting to a node that is on the local area network. Um, mm. Yeah, and like even just our, sorry. And even, even our vision is just that. It's just things should work without any extension. Of course, we want people to install, install the Electron based app because the Electron based app, we can then run a single IPFS node. Uh, we can uh, be more secure because extensions. Um, don't get access to your local storage, even if it's encrypted. An extension can, you know, uh, insert a, a key input even that um, tracks all, all of your keyboard in, uh, inputs um, so they can track your passphrase and so on. So you want, we want to fully migrate or incentivize people to install the Electron app. But before installing, we want people to experiment with the app and get impressed, like, okay, this is a real thing. So I'm now convinced, and now I can, and I, and I, and I will install an Electron app because I'm already convinced about the product. That's why mm -hmm. we feel strong about um, not having to install any third party stuff, at least in the first impression. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. in order to get uh, it done, we need to get all of these sorted out and, and working within the browser. 
Yeah, and, and, and again, like, be, be very honest about it. Like be very direct, say, hey, like, we evaluated, like we want this and that and that. And like, we have this timeline. Tell, me, tell us like what is possible. Um, otherwise, like it will be like, make it easier for others to prioritize. I will, I will create an issue, that issue as soon as possible with all the, the information there. Yeah, uh, was there more questions? No, I think most of the issues were, were about this. Um, for instance, Orbit TV uh, works out of the box because they, they use uh, the, the WebSocket star. So, you know, they connect to the, that server uh, in order for, for the peers to know each other and so on. That works for us out of the box. Of course, we, we want later on to, to, add, to add pinning and, and, and uh, persistency, but that's an afterthought about, uh, for, after this, this proof of concept. But yeah, for now, I think the, the real issues are, are APNS and, and the resolving of the seeds. But I think Paulo wanted to say something. No, no, I just wanted to point out that uh, uh, talking to Vasco and after some experiments, uh, we actually uh, discovered that uh, running a daemon of JS IPFS uh, and running a daemon of Go um, IPFS it's actually kind of different uh, and we are getting different results. For example, with the Go daemon, we actually in five minutes, we had a lot of peers connected uh, and with JS IPFS, we only had two uh, inside our local network uh, and uh, we knew that uh, those peers were, were us uh, since we have the same IDs. But um, there's actually something going on there, so we should yeah. actually take that in consideration. Yeah, like when, when, when you find those things right away, just pop an issue. Just say, hey, just why are you not doing this? Like, what is happening? And maybe it's a duplicate of another issue. That's fine. Like, they will just close yours and like point you to the other one. Uh, but like, you really want to get that information like to be fa very fast flowing, um, and also to like to help the community like support. Um, yeah, I'm not saying that like by opening issues that you have like answered is 100% like next second uh, because people are also busy but like you are now creating like this knowledge that is available for others to 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 search to find to like do their own troubleshooting but i think that's it in terms of uh, yeah. of ipfs things that we we encounter right so in terms of actions i will, I will create an issue as soon as possible so all right I think that that's it for this progress report call. Uh, anyone wants to say <laughs> more more stuff about this? <laughs> no, more or more questions? No. Uh, I, I think we're good. Um, yeah, what, uh, have in mind like again. I, I'm I'm jumping out of a power without a power sheet here. Um, but but like have in mind like what what are the multiple versions of what you're going to deliver by PFS Camp? What is the workshop? Um, in, in, and really like account for the number of weeks that we have left and like the dependencies across teams uh, and like really have like um, optimistic, ambitious, but also better safe than sorry approach as in like it is better to have something that works reliably well than having a ton of like shiny bells and whistles that kind of works sometimes. Because once you get like 30 people in the room and like 75 minutes, like there is no time for like debugging one on one, right? The 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 steps that you you write need to work a hundred percent of the times. Um, and and also ask for feedback. Like you have people in the community, like John Santos, Johnny Crunch, they are super engaged with identity stuff. Ask them, hey, I like, go and try like break it. Like <laughs> just like uh, help us understand like what are the things that we are not seeing uh, that users will do um, so that we are prepared. Right, so uh, we actually uh, had a meeting yesterday where we defined the, um, redefined the scope of things that we'll present in the in the in the POC in the workshop and so on. So we committed in, a, in into a very um, uh, specific path where we defined the things that we'll have. And I'm sorry for for my phone because it's ringing. Um, so we'll have, basically we'll have um, the ability to create identities, import identities, set up your locker, of course, with a passphrase. We'll be able to edit your profile and we'll be able to authenticate to dApps. And hopefully if we have time to, to, have, to have signing, okay? So having signing with, uh, within uh, that. That's our 
um, commitment for, for the POC. And in terms of the workshop, we are planning to have a very simple, small, mini shot uh, DAP. Uh, imagine you enter in a room where you can write something, write messages. And uh, we'll provide a notification um, uh, step-by-step guide for you to add authentication to, to that DAP. And once you have uh, authentication, so you are, you are now logged in, you can now uh, write messages and sign, sign those messages with, uh, with, your, with the ADM client. And then we can verify that those signatures within the messages. So imagine like you have a check mark after that, that message saying, hey, this was verified. And if the, the signature failed, it will show you uh, like a cross mark saying that the, the signature is not correct. That's our, that's our kind of um, workshop content that we are planning. Um, I don't know your thoughts about it, but I think that that will be a nice and simple um, DAP to do because we all have, already have uh, PubSub in order to do the, the shots. And also the messages are kind of, it's kind of simple. You just have an author and you have a content. Uh, which is plain text, so it's kind of easy. And there will be no persistency. So if you left the chat and enter again, you'll never see the, the, the old messages to not complicate things. Mm-hmm. Um, just for people to, to know how to have IDM, uh, IDM sign on and sign in to, to adapt. Yeah, does sound good. Uh, and again, I've seen like workshops from you guys before. Um, like, it is always like you know how to do it. Like it's always very good to like have all the steps written down, to to like have an, like explain like why these steps are important in the first place. Like why do I need to care about like sending messages? Like what this proper what this does this property gives to me? Uh, how could I map this to the app that I build normally? Um, and and also given that like again like this. Oh, Really think about like post a camp as well, like how to repackage that into either a series of blog posts that you can publish either in the Moxie blog or IPFS blog or both um, videos that you can record, just like introduce the whole concept and like the work and like get into. And also like how will other IPFS meetups like run your workshop? Like how will they be able to grab like a group of 20 people and like run a session without having to you to dial in? Like what is the information that needs to be there? Um, maybe it's a recording of you giving the presentation. Maybe, I don't know, like, uh, just like think about like all those follow-ups because they will make the original product also better, like more understandable. All right. We'll, we'll probably have all the content in, in GitHub, just, just like the to-do's workshop where people can follow up. So even if, um, someone wants to give a similar workshop, they will have a step-by-step uh, guides for the for for the speaker or the presenter to follow through, and also probably uh, if someone wants to wants to host a similar workshop, um, we can provide a step by step like check marks check check this before running the workshop like go into the network uh, within the place that you're gonna give the workshop and test stuff with at least five people or something like that because things might might break at least at this phase where where we're having um, uh, problems with with uh, the worldwide connection of IPFS within the browser itself. You can ask George to be your guinea pig. <laughs> Never leave. <laughs> yeah, he has to go through the workshop. <laughs> um, <laughs> by the way, I still have to to buy my my flight tickets. I have to take care of that. <laughs> uh, yeah, like it's not far. Worst case, like if you don't buy it, and if they are all sold out, we can always drive there. <laughs> <laughs> uh okay i need to go now but yeah this is a good chat great progress um i'll check the repos uh some more guys uh yeah thank I'll you, point you. Thank you or... <laughs> okay thank the rest you, of you guys bye. bye thank you bye bye so i think it's everything yeah so i think we can wrap it up so okay. thanks guys for coming by and uh hope to see you in the next uh progress report call I guess. Bye. 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 Bye.